Yeah, says he knows everything, bringing you that heat, that fire. We keeping a foot on the what? Mm, the Knicks. We keeping a foot on the what? Mm, the Knicks. Let's talk about it. Okay. Go ahead, he Did knows. I do that? Uh. Yes, you motherfucking did. Did I do that? Yes, you motherfucking did. Did I do that? Laura, did I do that? Yes, you motherfucking did. See, we have a Steve Urkel in boxing. And Steve Urkel, as you can see in the background, called out he knows everything directly as it relates to conspiracy associated with Spence versus Crawford. It's funny how delusional artists like this one in the fucking background, right? They have what we call dementia. They have what's called Alzheimer's. And they also suffer what's called self-identity crisis. They suffer from the lack of being fucking black. They suffer from the fact that as black men, they aren't fucking black. Okay, let's talk about it. The bottom line is this guy right here, when we look at his boxing take, right? And we look at how he breaks down fucking fights. He has a personal affinity for Manny fucking Pacquiao. He has a personal affinity for Nayoa Nui. He has a personal affinity for Vasily Lomachenko. He always makes all the excuses for all of these guys. When it comes to Manny Pacquiao, can't do no wrong. Manny Pacquiao has been known to be a qualified and certified cheater. The first time when he was supposed to fight Floyd Mayweather. All of a sudden, he didn't want to get doping. He didn't want to get VADA testing seven days out. Floyd brought up, the reason why I'm not going to fight you is because at the end of the day, I know you're on that shit. You was on that shit with Sugar Shane Mosley. You was on that shit with Antonio Margarito. You was on that shit when you fought every one of the other fighters that you fought. You're not going to be on that shit with me. Notice the reason why the fight took so many years later is because Manny Pacquiao had problems. He ran into financial issues to where he had no choice but to accept. But then all of a sudden, it's a things that make you say, hmm. It's a things that make you say, hmm. He can all of a sudden do doping. He can also do drug testing. Nayoa Nui. Oh, um, we're not going to talk about loaded gloves. We're not going to talk about padded gloves. When in actuality, his gloves was loaded. His gloves was padded for Stephen Fulton. If Stephen Fulton's coach didn't make a stink about it, then Nayoa Nui would have got away with loaded and padded gloves. And this is supposedly something that they do in Japan, right? Who was all over it? Steve Urkel. What was he telling these black fighters? Remember, he has self-identity crisis. He has an issue with his own kind. Oh, no. Take on the fight. Dare to be great. Right? Now, let's get to Lomachenko. Lomachenko lost to Devin Haney. Even I felt that Lomachenko should have had the opportunity to run it back. I'm not going to lie with that. But he was so gun ho on the fight is close. Devin Haney needs to run it back with Lomachenko. So allergic to black fighters. Always has a problem when black fighters are able to get away with what non-black fighters are able to get away with. You see, this is why he's the Steve Urkel. If you understand family matters, what you understand is Steve Urkel has two person personalities when he's around his own people and when he's not around his own people. When he's not around his own people, he gets very nerdy. He gets very different. When he's around his own people, he gets very pretentious. He becomes very careful. He moves in a way to where he's cautious. You want to know why? Because this is called self-identity crisis. You see, the Steve Urkel of boxing cannot tell he knows everything, nothing. Because when you look at Earl Truth Smith's career, this man has taken on every competition you can think of. This man has taken on all comers. And this is with two car crashes. This is with a fucking retina. This is with this guy right here taking long layoffs. Never taking tune-ups. So all of a sudden, when we sit here and we say Terrence Buck Crawford, the, the chihuahua walking behind the damn fence. 
never showed power to this magnitude. Took him tooth and nail to go with Jeff Horn. But yet he can all of a sudden stop Earl to Chew Spence. I want y'all to think about this. Sean Porter was outboxing him. All of a sudden, Earl to Chew Spence loses his ability to box. Kell Brook was outboxing him. All of a sudden, Earl to Chew Spence loses his ability to put the pressure. Okay. Jose Benavidez had one leg and he went life and death with Terrence Buck Crawford. All of a sudden, Earl to Chew Spence, who's known as uh, unlimited pressure because pressure does what? It bursts his pipes. The unlimited pressure style fighter all of a sudden doesn't have a motor. All of a sudden lacks durability. All of a sudden looks lethargic out there. Go ahead. He Are you knows. guys uh. not asking yourself that something was wrong with that fight? I know I'm not the only one that has to tell myself that Earl the True Spence didn't look like Earl the True Spence. Instead of these delusional artists like Steve Urkel that wants to sit here and lie to you and say Terrence Buck Crawford put on a masterful performance. Terrence Buck Crawford's never stopped anyone that fast. Terrence Buck Crawford's punching resistance has never revealed itself to happen that fast within the first two rounds. But we know he did things differently. We know he snacked up. He never snacked up prior to this fight, but he snacked up. We know that he did not take off his gloves at the end of the fight. The first thing a fighters do at the end of the fight, they tell their trainer, they tell their corner, take these gloves off of me. Why didn't Terrence Buck Crawford do that? It's a things that make you say, hmm. It's a things that make you say, hmm. Why did Terrence Buck Crawford get more bulk and more size for this fight? See, people don't want to talk about this. Terrence Buck Crawford was actually bigger. This is the biggest we've ever seen him in this fight. His size was close to Earl the True Spencer's size in this fight. See, a lot of people don't pay attention to these nuances. It's because people don't want to sit here and be honest about it. See, the delusional artists like Steve Urkel, their job is to keep you in delusions of grandeur. Their job is to keep you in a state to where you're deluded, to where you can't see the truth, to where you can't see what is, but the real G's, the super real G's, the ultimate real G's out here in these boxing streets, they get it. They see it. They've paid attention to it. They understand it. So when you got a guy who doesn't even understand who he is as an individual try to tell you about a sport about individuals that look like him you can't trust anything that he has to say because he doesn't even trust himself Ooh, what i said was so deep and profound so hear me and hear me mother fucking well oops. we gotta rewind that we gotta let that marinate in the corpus colossum we have to let that marinate in the cerebellum we have to let that marinate in the medulla obligata when a guy doesn't even know who he is as an individual, how can he sit here and tell you about individuals that look like him? When all he does is talk about individuals that don't look like him. When all he does is basically tell you that although he has a black skin, he's operating with a non-black skin. So the rules are different for Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> Stop the presses and pump the brakes on the nonsense and go sit down somewhere and what? Higgity fucking hush. So the rules are different for Vasily Lomachenko. A double. Stop the presses and pump the brakes on the nonsense. And go sit down somewhere and what? Go ahead, he double knows. Fucking hush. So hold up. The rules are different for Nayo and Nui. And for the number three. For confirmation. A triple stop the presses and pump the brakes on the nonsense. And a triple go sit down somewhere and what? A triple higgity fucking hush. Because when it's all said and done, this guy right here, his issue is his own issue. So when you have your own self-identity crisis issue, you cannot really sit here fundamentally and talk about boxing. As a matter of fact, I don't even know why people are still listening to this guy. Last time I checked, do you guys know that Family Matters got canceled from ABC? Do you want to know why Family Matters got canceled? I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. The reason why the show got canceled is because you had black people that were protesting saying they don't identify with Steve Urkel because Steve Urkel has self-identity crisis issues. Well, y'all need to cancel this Steve Urkel fucking boxing. 
because he has identity crisis issues. He doesn't even like his own. He doesn't even believe in his own. He believes in people that don't look like him. So why don't he just go Sammy Sosa real quick? Why don't he just go Serena Williams real quick? Why don't he just go ahead and bleach his fucking skin? We know that's what you want to do. We know you want to bleach. So when it's all said and done, you cannot tell us what's going on behind the scenes when you know that a fighter like Earl or Two Spence has been moving a certain way. He moves like the truth. Everything that this man has said that he's going to do, he has done it. He has met all of the contractual obligations that Terrence Buck Crawford asked him to meet. And they were stupid as fuck. He didn't have to do that. But he made the fight happen to satisfy you, Rudy Poo and Plum Plum Brains. You classic Dota and Troglodytes. You ultra fanboys with the ultra fanboy rhetorics. And then you're going to sit there and turn around after this man has given you the fight that you wanted. Even though the outcome didn't go in his supposed favor. Remember, we're in the Matrix. We're in an illusion. They're going to have a bilateral rematch. They're going to basically have a trilogy. And you guys will see what I'm talking about. That although Spence lost the battle, he will ultimately win the war. Let me say it again. Although Earl the True Spence lost the battle, he will ultimately win the war. Because people don't understand business. They don't understand supply and demand. They don't understand that boxing is in dire straits. Boxing is a dying sport that desperately Go ahead, needed he this. And now that they got it, boxing is now getting a... It's getting a heartbeat. It's getting resuscitation. It's getting a lifeline. You know, like that show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? They give you lifelines. Boxing is getting a lifeline. And the lifeline was given from Earl the True Spence. So, Steve Urkel, self identity crisis. Mr. I don't even know who I am as an individual. Mr. I suffer from the fact that every day that I drop content, I'm basically dropping content I don't want to drop. But I have to keep con continuously drop this content because at the same time, this is the content that's giving me subscribers. This is the content that's giving me viewers. Go look at Steve Urkel. He looks miserable. He looks miserable as fuck. That's why he's always doing these faces. Can I do that? Yes, you motherfucking did. Let me say it again. Did I do that? Yes, you motherfucking did. And number three for confirmation. Did I do that? Yes, you motherfucking did. That's why you get the stupid faces from him. Because he does not want to cover what he's covering. But here's the problem. When you are a sellout, when you don't even know your past, you don't even know your history, and you don't even move the way that you're supposed to move, no one can trust you. Let alone, no one can accept what's coming out of your rabbit ass mouth. That's the cool party. That's the unadulterated. That's the cutthroat to tell fashion. So the next time you put he knows everything's word, brand, mouth, lip, whatever on your fucking bullshit content, you need to ask yourself, do I even know who the fuck I am? Because he knows everything knows who he is. He's a man with confidence, purpose, and abundance mindset. Because he tells people, be men and women with confidence, purpose, and abundance mindset. He's a man that lays on his pick and double downs on that bad boy with confidence and fortitude. Are you that individual? People can see that you're suffering. People can see that you are having anxiety and depression each and every single time you drop content. Don't take my word for it. Go watch his mannerisms. This is why you see this guy gives you Tourette syndromes. This is why you see this guy acts in a way that he's normally not going to act on his everyday movement, his everyday action. This is what you call a chameleon. This is a person that when he's around a certain group of people, he acts one way. And then when he's around another certain group of people, he acts another way. Don't take my word for it. Watch how he moves. So do you really want to believe somebody like that? Do you really think somebody like that is credible? Or are you going to listen to Mr. Authenticity, Mr. Consistency, Mr. He Knows Everything that's bringing you that whoop, that heat and that fart and keeping a foot on the whoop on the knicks and keeping a foot on the whoop on the knicks when it's all said and done. Y'all got to ask yourselves, man. What does this boil down to? Does this boil down to this fool? And his nonsense? Or does it boil down to the simple fact that when it's all said and done, this guy has a problem. He has a fundamental issue. 
What is his fundamental issue? His fundamental issue is until you can start coming after others, you need to realize that you need to fix your own shit. This is He Knows Everything. Checking out.